In last video, we learned about how to load the data from CSV file to the uh, SQL Server table. So, what if we execute again this package and this task? What will happen? So, see that I will execute once again. It's executed. Now, what would be the result? See here, I will execute this and I find that the data is loaded again. It means whatever time I will execute, it will reload the data without considering whether this data is available or not. So it is just pending the data in the table. But that's not fair. We do not want to have this behavior. We wanted to have the data that we have in our system, that we have in our CSV file. We just wanted to have that data only, whatever the time that I am executing. Why is this required? Because, for example, if I am changing this data and I am adding one more data, so what is the expected result? I should have only five members, not more than that. But if I try to re-execute this process, now don't worry, now we are on a control flow. If you go on the data flow again, you'll see the same screen. The file was in, is extracted and loaded in the system. So we just executed. Yes, we are getting the RAM, but we have the old data available in this table. So the one simplest way is that we just truncate this data because this data is in the uh, database, so we can use the truncate command. So we can build the truncate command that will clean the data before loading. What is the name of this object? Members. That's fine. Execute. Ah, it looks like the database for which wants to execute it. It's truncated. Now see, there is no data. We can execute this again. Data is loaded. Now execute again. data is loaded. Stripping again. So we need to truncate. It means if we truncate the table before loading, it will give you the expected result. So how we we'll use the truncate command along with the process to load the data? So here we can use the executive SQL task to accomplish this task. The data flow task is the one control for task. The another control flow task that we have is the execute SQL task that can be used to any kind of the SQL query uh, execute against the selected data source. So we'll rename and we'll say the all right. We wanted to truncate here. How do you set this? Click on the edit. And the first thing that you need to define what kind of resource we have. We are using the OLEDB, we have another kind of resource, Excel, ODB, CD, .NET, and some other sources. So, next I am selecting the connection. The connection available is that SQL. And now I need to type the query. Query is here. Everything is configured. Now another property we needed to set for this purpose, just click OK. Once you click OK, it's configured. We will not leave these two control independently because of the both can be started simultaneously. So we need to set the flow and the flow will be firstly truncate the table and then load the data. Now it's done. Now execute it. Now we are not going to individually execute every task. We wanted to execute both the tasks in one go. So what I need to do, I go here and I just Go on the package and right click and click on the execute. It will execute the package. First of all, it will truncate the data and then it will load the data. We have five rows. Try, we should try once again. 
I click on the package and select HP package. This is twice. We have included this package two times. So we are getting the only one set of data. The reason being that uh, first of all we are truncating this table and then we are loading the data. Let's try to add one more chair object and there file. Right? So the file that we have here is the member. We are moving to members. As of now, we have five members. Now we have removed two, so now we split three only. Let's try it. It's done. Three rows is completed. Three rows is loaded. Truncate testament is also completed. It means that they should delete our five rows and it will load again. Three rows. We are getting it. So, you know that the how to mail, but it's not always a good way to truncate the data and load the data. In the next video, we'll learn how to handle the update without deleting the data.